All right. Um, and here we go. Hello, my name is Andrew Morgan Smith, and I wanted to talk to you today about my template and my workflow and what that means to me right now and what I do with it right now. Um, kind of do a walkthrough of how I make my template a little bit and talk a little bit about samples. Um, probably won't do too much mock-up talk at, on this video. We'll do another video for that. Um, so let's jump right in, huh? So here we go. I uh, work in Logic, and you can see this is a queue I've already worked on. Um, oh, no, oh, not this. Come on, go do it. I don't know what you're doing. Auto saving, dying. Cra oh, okay, good. My computer is stressed at the moment. Anyway, so um, first thing you'll notice is that I am a bit organized when it comes to this, right? So. Um, I do think that it's very important that you're organized in your sounds and your um, your cues. You know where everything is. You know what cue you need to do. You know how many minutes of music you need to write. Um, so if I want to write something for bassoon, I just go into my woodwind folder, and then I know that everything's grouped by instruments. So here's my bassoons, right? If I want a full ensemble, my ensembles are all up here, right? My my um, low woodwinds are all here. Um, so I know where everything is, which is really important. And whenever you have a template of, you know, I guess 447 tracks, you should know where everything is. That's really important. Um, so from there, um, I like to know what kind of stems I like to deliver. Um, so I go into my stems folder um, and here are all audio tracks of the stems that that I can deliver to on a project or to a mixer or where whoever is working on the project. Which means before I started making this template, I actually sat down and wrote out each thing I wanted to to, to be able to deliver. Um, I have the things that I like to deliver to um film so like that's my full strings orchestral percussion piano heart bells brass woodwinds uh synths which synths is kind of a catch-all um thing on this on this template and my full mix this is important when it comes to organizing how you're gonna load all your instruments so if i know i want to be able to have all my flutes be on one stem to be able to send to a mixer or somebody, then I know that I better load all my flutes in a separate contact instance so that way I don't get oboes on it or flutes. I mean, oboes on the flute stem. So whenever I start, that's one of the th first things I do is I know, all right, I need 32 audio tracks because that's how many stems I want to be able to make. And so... I made this with the intention of saying, oh, I'm gonna deliver to my um, my mixer. Well, I'm gonna go like low woodwinds through actual flute, oboe, clarinet, each brass instrument, all down the line, right? Um, so it's preset, so I don't have to spend time doing that. Um, all right, cool. So the other thing that you need to think about when you're doing with your stems is, whatever you're gonna deliver with verb on it, you need to have separate verbs for those instances, which is what this is. So here are my verbs. I'm using Seventh Heaven uh, Professional from Liquid Sonics. It's basically a Bricasti um, emulator. Um, it sounds really good. And these are those full stems, right? Woodwind verb, brass verb, piano verb, uh, orchestral verb, string, synth, large percussion. There's no full mix because these are all being bussed to the full mix, so they're being summed in the full mix stem. Um, and that's the other thing. Whenever I make these um, these audio tracks, all of the it's an ascending buses, right? So it's like buses seven through forty-eight. So. Um, so that way I name them and then whenever I go to bust them later, which I'll show you, 
it already has the label on it and you don't even have to think about oh well which was a bus seven or eight or ten or thirty five you just have the thing already labeled so um the next thing i do is once i know what i'm loading i'll load up ve pro which ve pro runs on a sample pc um this is one that i had made by heavy, heavy digital audio which is great um and it's a separate um it's a sample host <clears throat> so this is connected by gigabit ethernet and uh just a little switch and it goes into my um it goes into my mac by ethernet and i can connect to it from my daw um and i'm only using one computer some people will use multiples i'm only using one sample computer um and as you can see i've also set these up to be grouped just like the uh the stems are grouped so um i know that i have all my high woodwind ensemble stuff is together low woodwind ensemble stuff is together flutes oboes clarinets bassoons horns you know pianos uh violins celli violas basses all that stuff all grouped so that way they easily can be routed to to a stem without any extra work on my part um aside from the work to set up the template um so within each of these i i set up the instrument um and then i'll also go across and work to um, match so if i'm in my flutes i'll go in and it's like oh i, I want to match the tone of the Cinewinds flutes then i'll go into my eight do flutes and i'll load up the proper mics to match what i think it needs and i literally just sit there and hit each note and alter each fader to be what i think it needs to be um here's the same thing with um with the flutes for the orchestral tools flutes etc etc right so like that <laughs> long story short across every library to sit there and try and figure that out also i'll do some panning in here so you can see that i've already panned the stereo field some of them i'm running through virtual sound stage if i don't feel like i'm getting close enough or if i want to process the sound a little more um but i'm doing a lot of pre-production editing and mic mixing in order to not have to do that later and not do that while i'm working um so once i have these set up Oh, and if you're at wondering why these don't go down the side here, right? Why don't I have, um, like, all my woodwinds in one drop down? Is because Logic doesn't support that right now. The newest version of VE Pro, if you do something in the environment window, will let you do that. But I don't have that right now because I'm working on something else. And so I, this is just, once again, where I'm at right now. So once I'm back in Logic... Um, I load up the sample, so I would create the, I would know, oh, I have two in, two instruments uh, in this first instance, which are high my, wood, my high woodwind ensemble. I connect to it with this, with the label and everything. And then now I have woodwinds, right? Um, and I do that across everything first. So I want to make sure that I have all my instruments loaded that I want to load. Um, and then this is like my effects open stuff. So if I want to add more things in, here we are. Um, cool. So once I've loaded and connected everything, I can group the folders. So all the woodwinds, all the brass, percussion strings, synths, um, large percussion um, and actually go in to start mixing and bussing everything so here's my my woodwind section if you're looking at the mixer window um, I haven't uh, panned anything because that's all done in VE Pro right now um, and so you can see my buses so here is my buses i go oh i want to export to full woodwind 
here it is, right? So I don't have to worry about, oh, what was bus seven? I have it labeled already. So um, this is a summing channel. So all my woodwinds are being summed into here and I can output it to here. High woodwinds, right? This would be low woodwinds, flutes. Um, all right, so this still may be high woodwinds. Um, right, yeah, so high woodwinds, low woodwinds, and then also below that, there's subcategories. So you'd get the flutes and oboe and uh, clarinet, bassoon. Um, with the reverb, what I like to do is um, I always do uh, pre-fade, and that way... Um, and give it a generous amount. I mean, that's to taste however you want it to sound, but um, but basically you can, this can be your dry signal, basically, and then this is your wet signal. And the further back you are in the room, right? So that's how I have it mixed right now. And I can set it how I want, right? So, um, that allows me to have a lot more control over, uh, it, they're separated, right? So, it's a little easier, at least for me, to sit here and say, oh, I want it to be less present. I want more, make it sound like it's further back in the room. Well, then I like to do that um, and separate that out. Um, and I just do that across all the instruments. So something that's supposed to be further back, send it to more reverb, maybe pull down some more of the um, ensemble sound, or pull down some more of the dry signal over here. Um, and that, the idea behind that, um, and in general, my whole, my whole template is I want it to sound like this orchestra was recorded in one room and then there's some reverb put on the back of it. I don't want it to sound like a really, um, really close sound with a bunch of long tails on it. I want it to sound like, I want my brass, um, I really like the the sound of the Cinebrass and, uh, Cinebrass and uh, Cinematic Studio Brass. So like, I want my, I like my room sound, right? I like it to sound you're hearing a lot of the room sound in that versus it sounding like it's close mic'd with a lot of um, reverb on the back of it. Um, and that's kind of the whole philosophy I've gone with. So when I'm writing things, um, I like to stick with that kind of idea. So especially with woodwinds is a good example. It's probably the best example of this where if I'm writing chords or if I'm writing something that's like a general thing backing, uh, sound ideas. So like I need low woodwinds, like brooding on something. I don't need that to be specifically orchestrated in the sense that I don't need to sit there and say, oh, well, that needs to be two bassoons and a bass clarinet and a contra bass clarinet and a contra bassoon in this order. And I just, most of the stuff I'm doing isn't going to be live. So what I end up doing is saying, these things are further back in the room. I like how the ensemble sounds already in the room. I'd rather take the high woodwinds and go, and not worry about, well, what's the orchestration? Because it's not what's important in the moment. Um, and I could play you an example of that. Um, we're gonna play, this is, uh, I'll just play it. I'll play a little bit of this and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. But um, um, the last thing I do, once the, once the project is done writing, once I'm done writing the cue, 
I like to do my audio export of my stems. So because I already have these things set up, I can just record enable and it's already bus to what I need it to be bus to, right? Boop, 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 boop. And I just record enable what I want, hit record and like set my sample mark, my, my cycle marker. And then I hit record and then I get these audio tracks, which I've already done for this queue. It's kind of a long queue, seven minutes long. By kind of, I mean, it is a long queue. <laughs> Um, and that allows me to have flexibility, um, not only if I need to hire a music editor who's going to manipulate stems, but also um, for myself, if for some reason I have to leave this project for six months, a year, a year and a half, and I come back and I don't remember what my samples are, or I don't have gotten better samples or whatever it is, I already have the audio that I could manipulate if I can't figure out what that is. Um, it's just a lot easier to handle. Also, if your exports are already correct, whenever you go to export for the film, so say this was a full queue or a full reel that was already done because I've been working in reels on this movie. So if I do this, and in Logic I hit Command E, um, I pick where I want it to go, which doesn't matter where I want it to go. Tell it to do the cycle marker, and I could say I usually say where the timing is so this would be exactly in my movie where it's starting it'll put the track name already I hit export and it makes nice neat audio files that I can then send to my director or my mixer whoever is giving feedback on stuff or even my uh, music editor and it's just a lot cleaner I can finalize a movie in a couple hours because I'm not having to make sure my samples all play back correct as long as my audio played back fine I'm okay um, and it's a lot more work to get this template running but the, I think the end product is a lot more useful um, cool that's basically my template and I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone has um, let me play back some of this for you. I'm going to mute this stem so you can hear just the samples. And uh, I'll do a walkthrough on some mock-ups sometime. If you have any questions about mock-ups or about something I've done in the past, another score or something, I'd be glad to explain it. So uh, I'm going to try and play back some of this and go through it. So here we go.
Yeah, it's just a little taste. So <laughs> I could just go on for hours and hours and hours about all these different things. So I'll have to limit things. So thanks so much for watching. I hope this was enlightening a little bit. I hope that you learned something. Uh, I learned I talked too much. So, all right. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.